Hello, everybody. What a week it has been. The unprecedented response to the COVID-19 pandemic is happening so fast, it can be difficult to know exactly how to respond, especially as a small business owner or freelancer in the piano service world. These Gazelle School of Business webinars are free webinars that we have offered the piano service industry, but today's topic is unique because this isn't about Gazelle. This isn't even about your personal business. This is about helping our service industry respond to these unprecedented events. So let's dive in. Today's webinar has about two hours of critical application and around two to eight weeks of additional application, meaning in the middle of this crisis, uh, you should be able to respond really well and make all of your critical decisions in less than two hours. And we will be teaching you how to do this. The rest of the application is really a question of, if I do pause my business, uh, what proactive measures can I take during my downtime? And we will be discussing these topics and doing an extensive Q&A at the end. I am registered piano technician, Timothy Barnes, uh, the co-founder of Gazelle. And today I am here with our team, Luke, Nathan, and George. Now, George is your business coach. We didn't think he was gonna be able to be here this evening, but he is here. And Luke will actually be joining us as well because he brings a unique perspective as a fellow small business owner in addition to being the other co-founder of Gazelle. Thanks, Tim. You know, Tim and I have been doing Gazelle together for the past five years, but what most people don't know is that I've also been a small business owner for most of my career. And as COVID-19 has spread around the world, it's impacting every area of our lives, and how you respond to situations like this really does matter. Now, George helped us build the content for this webinar. We're actually really glad he's here because we didn't think he was going to be able to make it this evening. He had a personal conflict, uh, but you're here, George. Yeah, yeah, I am. So let's dive in, right? <laughs> this is a significant moment in time for your business. And you know this because everybody is scared and confused. Work is disappearing, revenue is drying up, and it feels like everybody is on the verge of canceling. Now, navigating any situation of this magnitude isn't a walk in the park, but nobody should have to feel scared, uncertain, or confused about how to respond. For the past few weeks, our team has been working with piano technicians around the world who are all wondering the same thing. Do I need to temporarily pause my business? And if this is you, or you have already come to this decision, you need to know that you have an even more important question to ask. What's next, right? These are unprecedented times and almost nobody was prepared for this. But it is up to you as the small business owner to get through this in a way that strengthens your business because nobody needs two crises. And if you don't respond to this crisis well, you are going to come out the other side and get hit in the face with a second one. And in the past seven days, I have seen many business owners who clearly don't know how to respond. Right, as I've been on Facebook and I've seen people responding, I have seen just about every response you can imagine. And sometimes I see it, it's like, ah, that was actually a decent response. And other times it's just like, ah, you have absolutely no clue what you just communicated to all of your clients by wording your response that way. But the truth is, you don't have to make these mistakes. So here are three things you can do to strengthen your business during this time of uncertainty. Understand the situation, make the right short-term decisions, and take advantage of unplanned downtime. And if you do these three things well, you'll be prepared for what's to come, and you'll have a stronger business when this storm is over.
So let's talk about step one, understanding the situation. Well, you have absolutely no control over COVID-19, none of us do, but you do have complete control over how you respond and how you communicate with your clients. So if you find yourself asking, do I need to temporarily pause my business? Well, you need a solid framework to guide you through that question so you don't get hit with a second crisis on the other side. So think through these three things, legal, civic, and personal. These are the three legs of a stool. If any one of them are broken, you need to take action. Legal, are you legally obligated to stay home? Yes or no? Has your regional government required you to shelter in place? If so, this makes it easy, an easy question to answer. Be prepared that in the next few weeks, this may come to your area. We hope it doesn't, but if it does, you need to come back to use this framework. Civic, do you believe it's your civic duty to limit your exposure in the community? Yes or no? And personal, are you putting yourself or someone you love at significant risk? Yes or no? We all have families and loved ones who may be immunocompromised. If this is the case for you, you may have zero tolerance for exposure for personal reasons. Your business theoretically could stay open, but you can't. These are the practical ways that you can make your decision. But there is an even more fundamental question that you should be asking yourself. How do my clients feel? For you, as a business owner, this is not about what your government is or is not doing. This isn't even about you and your needs. You need to understand that this is about how your clients perceive a threat in their life. And we are seeing a wide range of responses from fear and pandemonium in the community to calm preparation. And you, meaning your business, have clients responding in every way you can imagine because they're humans. And this is where you can get into a lot of trouble if you don't communicate with them clearly. Because how your clients feel is more important than anything else. And if you make them feel unsafe, you will lose their trust. And that is the second crisis, right? So you need to go slow and you need to make the right short-term decisions. And this brings us to our second point. Making the right short-term decisions isn't and shouldn't be complicated. This crisis is complicated, but the decisions you need to make are simple if you ask the right questions. So let's start with the most important decision you are facing. Do I need to temporarily pause my business? And you need to call it a pause. Call it a pause, not a shutdown, because this is actually what it is. So to make this decision, you call it a pause and you go to the framework we just gave you, legal, civic, and personal. If you need to pause your business for any one of those reasons, then you have the clarity you need to make a confident decision. Another decision you can make or you need to make is why do you believe that this is the right move for your business? So ask the question, can I clearly identify why I am coming to each of my decisions? This is really important in just generic business, but this is absolutely critical in the moment of a crisis. Because if you slow down just enough to communicate the why and get to that, your, the quality of your decision goes through the roof. So too many business owners just knee jerk reactions and don't do this well. You don't want to be one of those people. But saying, ah, I need to shut down is very different than saying, hey guys, I am an immunocompromised and need to pause my operations. It's very different than saying, I need to shut down because I believe it is my civic duty to not spread the contagion. It's very different than saying, I am honoring our government's recommendation to shelter in place until the situation improves. Clear communication is important because poor communication results in a lack of trust. 
And on this topic, how you frame this conversation is very important. If you have already identified your company's mission and values, this is a good time to frame your decision inside that pre-existing structure. For example, your mission might be to bring music and joy to all of my community. If that's the case, you should say something like, my mission has always been to bring music and joy to the community, but I believe now it's my civic duty not to spread this contagion. So I'm pausing my business and I will be exploring new ways to still bring music and joy to the community during this time of crisis. And if I could jump in here real quick with one last thought, don't make this about blaming your government for complaining, right? There's going to be plenty of time on the other side of this crisis to be indignant about your government's response if you are upset about something. But this is not the time for it. This is the time for framing your decision with the kind of clarity that builds trust. So let's cover another decision many people are facing. Do I need to send a mass email to my customers? Okay, listen, if we woke up in your shoes, we would say, no, not everyone. Only send it to people who have an upcoming appointment, or who are scheduled to receive a service reminder. For everyone else, honestly, this is just noise. How many emails have you gotten this week? I know my inbox is full. Now, if this crisis drags on long enough, you will need to communicate with more and more people but cross that bridge when it comes. We have a resource we'll be giving you in a few minutes to help you through this. The next decision you need to make is content and tone of all of your communication. So what should I say to my customers? You need a good framework for this, right? Every message you send needs to be expected, relevant, and personal. This is a concept we've talked about in previous webinars, but in a crisis, just like so many other things, this is even more important to just pause long enough just to ask, is this expected? Is it relevant? Is it personal? Send. Right, so is this message expected? Well, a week ago, nobody would have said, yeah, I'm planning on shutting down my business or I'm planning on pausing my business. I'm planning on doing X, Y, Z. And a week ago, if you were to sit an email with uh, the word COVID in it, people would be like, oh yeah, that's a problem on the other side of the world. Like nobody would have expected it. But today, some of your clients need to hear from you. You need to send the right message to the right people at the right time. Is your message relevant, meaning, is it on topic, short, sweet, and to the point? Case in point, I got an email from Delta Airlines. It was a mile long, oh my goodness. It droned on and on about them and Delta and how great of a company they are and how great their response to this crisis is and on and on and on. It was a freaking encyclopedia, right? Meanwhile, my kid's school is canceled. We already have four cabin fever banshees running around the house. My wife is on the phone trying to reschedule doctor's appointments. I am getting calls, emails, and texts from customers. My team is asking me questions about how we need to respond. No thanks, Delta. I like you as a company, but all I needed to hear was this. We care about you. We're doing everything we can to keep you safe. And if you need to change your flight, you can click here. That's it. They lost my respect when they chose to be part of the noise. And lastly, it needs to be personal. In all of this, it is easy to forget that your clients are human. So remember to address them by name and speak to what they are feeling. Just say something like, Sally, you deserve to feel safe. So I have decided to temporarily pause my business until this date. Another decision you need to make is how long you plan to pause your business. Probably not as long as you fear, but the truth is nobody knows. This is an unprecedented and fluid situation. But you need to give your clients a plan. This is your job as a good business owner. And this needs to be your plan. And your plan needs to, be, needs to remove uncertainty. So let's talk about a simple framework of how to do this. You do this by saying how long you plan to pause, 
reminding them that they can still book future appointments and promising that you will make rescheduling easy. It's important to acknowledge the uncertainty of this situation, but you need to give them fixed points to anchor their, to anchor their ability to make a decision. Otherwise, you're just throwing more uncertainty into their life. So structure the message something like this. Sally, you deserve to feel safe. I'm pausing my business until X date because I believe it's my civic duty to do X, Y, and Z. But don't worry, you can still book your appointment. I'll make rescheduling easy and I plan to reevaluate this decision on X date. Stay healthy and safe, Jim. The reason we're stating this clearly is because you need to be careful what you promise during this time of uncertainty. So you need to decide what you can and cannot promise. Which brings us to the next question. What should I promise? But really, what you should be asking is, what can I promise? And the truth is, nothing you can't deliver today. This is a really good framework to use. And another good question to ask before promising anything to anybody is, what problem am I trying to solve by promising this? Because if you think about it, you can promise that you can take care, that you care about them and how they feel because this is important. You can promise that you will reevaluate this decision on X date because this gives them certainty. This is something the PTG did really well. Their summer convention is in Orlando and they immediately sent an email saying, it's not been canceled, we will reevaluate on May 15th. Now I don't need to worry about this until May 15th. And the world is probably going to be a different place in May 15th and who knows what it's gonna look like. You have an opportunity to serve your customers by giving them certainty. You can also promise that you're accepting appointments for later this year and that you will make rescheduling easy. If you only promise things you can deliver today, it simplifies your life and clarifies everything you say, which builds trust and clarity builds trust. So let's oh. transition to another uh, decision. Sorry, no, okay. <laughs> messed up the slide deck there. <laughs> We're gonna transition to another decision. Uh, and it, it's one you really need to think about, when do I restart my business? Yeah. So the decision to pause your business is only half of their story. The other half is how you plan to resume, right? You need to be the kid in the back seat repeatedly asking yourself, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Right? Because nobody is gonna tell you the right time to hit play. And you can gain clarity on this by reverse engineering the same decision framework you needed to pause the business. Legal, civic, and personal. Legal, have the travel bans been lifted? Yes or no? Civic, do I believe my civic duty has been fulfilled? Yes or no? And personal, am I no longer putting myself or someone I love at risk? Yes or no? This is your play button. If you can answer yes to all of these questions, then you're ready to move forward. Now, earlier, you used any of these circumstances to cause you to pause your business, but all three of these have to be true to begin again. So how do I restart my business? This is the final decision you need to consider. You need to pick a specific date, but don't just say, oh, I'm back, please book. No, you need to go back to to the specific reason of why you chose to pause your business in the first place so that you can clearly communicate why you are ready to restart. For example, I believe my civic duty has been fulfilled and I'm ready to restart my business on X date. By doing this, you're bringing closure to your story, to the story that you started. And we told you to send your pause notice only to people who needed to know, but this is your happy ending. It's time to celebrate. Consider sending this notice to your entire client base. It's actually a huge marketing opportunity. And no, this isn't capitalizing on a crisis because the crisis is over. Everybody will be excited and everybody will be ready to support small businesses to help the economy rebound. If you make these decisions with confidence, you will be entering this crisis from a position of strength and be poised to come out stronger on the other side. Because imagine if tomorrow you have the confidence that you made a good decision about whether you needed to pause your business. 
You communicated clearly why you came to this decision. You sent the right email to the right customer at the right time. You have a plan for how to communicate with your clients in the future. You are clear about what you should and should not promise to your customers. And you know exactly what to say at every step of the way. And you know how and when to restart your business. So now you know that for the next few weeks, you've got a plan and you are good. You don't need to worry. You know that you made the best possible decision for your business in the middle of what could be one of the biggest challenges your business ever faces. And that is a really good place to be. So now what? Well, <laughs> that brings us to our third point. Take advantage of this unplanned downtime. And I think it's really important to stop and say here that nobody would have chosen this. Nobody planned this, but we're here. We want you to be stronger and better prepared on the other side of this crisis. So how will you spend your time? Not all activities will make you and your business stronger. So don't sit on your keister and watch Netflix all, way, all day, right? One movie, hey, that's pretty cool. One season, I'm definitely planning on doing that. Uh, but don't do this during business hours. If you choose to be focused and intentional during the crisis, you will position your business for success on the other side. So what do you want to focus on? Well, we've broken this down into four broad categories. And Nathan is going to post in the chat channel a guide for you to use as a resource. First, consider a shift in revenue. And we intentionally put this first. Look for temporary ways to generate new revenue that are easy to execute. We can't guarantee you'll be able to create new kinds of revenue during this crisis, but here's a framework to evaluate different opportunities. You need to focus on skills you already have available today. If you have an idea that requires 12 weeks of preparation and this is an eight week crisis, then that is a long-term opportunity, not a way to shift your revenue in the short term. So here are some ideas. Shop work. The most obvious thing you can do is shift to shop work. If you have institutional clients who are already planning on doing some, something that later this year, now is the time to do it. And you need to do this because later this year, during your traditional slow time, it's probably going to be packed with service calls. But let's talk about some less what? obvious things. Digital busking. Right. How many of your clients have said, man, I wish I could sit all day and listen to you play? Well, now they can. Hop on Facebook Live or Zoom and digitally busk. Put up a donation link and say, all of my tunings have been canceled and my clients always say they wish they could sit and listen to me play all day. You are bored, so am I. So I tuned my own piano and tonight for four hours, I am going to play evening music for you and your spouse. So light some candles, cook a steak and enjoy live music with your loved ones from your local piano technician. Now, I, I wanna pause here because we are already watching tons of big name artists doing this on Instagram and they're getting all the news coverage. And it's important to note, you are not gonna make the evening news because you do this, but you don't have to because your clients are in your tribe. They know you and they want to support you. And so if your tribe is strong enough, when you put out this call, you will actually generate some revenue that you couldn't generate before, right? So remember, this is actually more than about generating revenue though, or tips or whatever it is, right? This is a chance for you to build deeper personal relationships with your tribe of customers. Trying to get new customers isn't the right thing to do right now. So focus on creative ways to build deeper relationships with your existing customers. They are the ones who will help you through this because they already have that personal relationship with you. Host a digital group of piano classes. Another opportunity is teaching piano online. This is something you can do, then 
Uh, if this is something you can do, then focus on adults who have always wanted to learn to play the piano. But this isn't your traditional piano lesson. Charge them 50 bucks to learn three songs during this crisis. These are digital group piano lessons. So sign up for Zoom um, or any other platform. We like Zoom, it works well for us. Email your clients and earn $5,000 from 100 clients paying you 50 bucks over this break. This revenue will dry up as soon as life gets back to normal. But if you know how to teach a piano, this is a great chance to experiment with a few things. Consider online mentoring. Another opportunity here is to charge X dollars to do private one-on-one -on -one or small group mentoring with young technicians, right? Just make your services available and turn some extra cash. Imagine if you got three students paying you $50 a day to teach them everything you know. That's about $6,000 in your pocket before this thing's over. Our second broad category is professional development. And this is the next thing you should focus on. Investing in your future always costs some amount of time and money, and but this is an investment in your future. So here are some ideas. Read a book. This is a $12 investment plus a little time or rent it digitally from your local library and go through Gazelle's recommended reading list in the guide that you downloaded earlier. Watch all the past Gazelle School of Business webinars. You know, for the past year, we've been recording these so that you can watch them when it's convenient for you. Well, now's a great time. This is a free resource and you already have it right at your fingertips. So take some time to apply the concepts you learn in each webinar. Oh, sorry, the slide deck. <laughs> Hone your craft. Uh, this is a really good opportunity for young technicians. And this could just mean investing time but this is a great opportunity to get quality mentorship from seasoned technicians who normally are too busy to invest in your future. This is the other side of what I was talking about a minute ago. So think about it. We all know that the best technicians out there are super busy. And if you go ask them for a mentorship today, odds are uh, they don't have time to adequately invest in you. But now they've got a ton of time. And so also know that this is not a charity they need to feed their families too. So pay them 50 or 100 or 150 bucks a day to teach you everything they know. Study for your guild exams. Don't stop life. The RPT scholarship deadline is April 1st. So don't miss an opportunity just because of uncertainty. Research and planning. This is a great time to do a little research and explore new ways to grow your business. Our third category is networking. Personally call every piano teacher you know. Just check in on them and ask how they are faring through this crisis. Be a friend. This is not a sales call. This is just saying, I care about you as a human and strengthening that relationship. Personally call every piano teacher you don't know. Say, hi, I'm Luke and I've decided to take five days out of this vacation to vacation to, yeah. to check in on you as check on as many piano technician, excuse me, check in on as many musicians in our city as I could just to hear how you're doing and give you a friend to talk to. So how has this been affecting you? Contact churches. Now, if they're doing online services, their pianos still need to be tuned. Consider donating your services. Contact local musicians who are doing live shows and benefit concerts. And participate in neighborhood unity. If you live in the city or even the suburbs, do what so many Italians are doing and move the piano closer to an open window and play music for people. You know, I'm already watching this happen in my own neighborhood. And I live in the suburbs, I don't live in the city. And people are coming together and coming up with creative ways to say, hey, when you're out walking the dog or walking the kids, right? And you're keeping that social distancing going, uh, you know, they're putting shamrocks in the windows and having scavenger hunts and leaving chalk messages on the sidewalks. They're already innovating around ways to build community because people want community. 
you're a musician, throw the windows open, it's springtime, start playing music, right? This is a great opportunity to get to know people and you will forever be remembered as the guy, the piano guy in your neighborhood. I love that, Tim. I really do. So finally, our fourth broad category is projects and organization. So you can do things like simplify your business processes. You've always wanted to have time for this. Build better automated reminders. Build a better website. Organize your client database. Interview an accountant to help you clean up your books. Or organize your shop. Uh, there we go. <laughs> uh, I think what we're saying is this, uh, life isn't stopping because of this crisis. You were probably on track to spend 30 minutes a day improving some aspect of your business this year anyway. And now that you're working from home, right, you're just going to get all of that time to invest in your business condensed into this vacation. So you now have the chance to get a year's worth of work done in the next few weeks. One thing to keep in mind, to achieve this, you need to structure your time. What is ultimately at risk here is losing productivity. Productivity can be elusive and is what people often struggle with when they work from home. As a software engineer, I've worked from home actually my whole career. And there are several things that I've learned that help me be more productive. One, keep regular routine. If you did service calls from 10 to five, keep these as your work hours from home. You don't need to change your established rhythms just because the type of work you're doing has changed. Two, and this is really important, keep work and personal life separated. Find a physical space that works for you. When I'm sitting in this chair right here, I'm at work. If you have a shop, when you walk through that door, you are at work. And get your family on board with this. All of my kids know that when they see me sitting in this chair, they shouldn't interrupt me unless it's urgent. And three, get showered and dressed like you're going out. This seems like a small thing, but mentally it really defines your routine. You need to do all three of these things because it separates work and personal life and makes you more productive. And you are not alone in this. The entire world is having to go through this transition with you right now. We are all together in this. So invest in things that COVID can't take away from you. You are preparing yourself for growth because if you use this time to give yourself an education, COVID can't take that away from you. If you invest in yourself in any way, COVID can't take that away from you. If you keep a level head and make smart decisions, that is something that you will carry with you for the rest of your life, and COVID cannot take that away from you. If you build a better website, hone your skills, and become an RPT, build stronger relationships with the piano teachers in your community, build better systems, these are all things that COVID cannot take away from you. And remember, you can't afford a second crisis. If you don't respond well to this first crisis, you are going to lose trust, damage your business, and your reputation in the long run. And we don't want that to be your story. But the ball is in your court. You may have walked into this webinar scared, uncertain, or confused, but our hope is for you to come out stronger on the other side because you chose to be the person that understood the situation, made great short-term decisions, and took advantage of this unplanned downtime. Now, I'm sure you have some specific questions, so we're going to take some time for a Q&A. And the way we answer questions here is this, uh, what would we do if we woke up in your shoes. So what are the most pressing questions you have in front of you right now? All right, thank you guys, that was really great. Um, so I have uh, several questions that have come in um, and we'll just kind of start going down through them one at a time here. 
so the first one that came in uh, is this. Should we use any kind of liability or waiver forms when doing any potential in-home service during this time? That's a good question. Um, I think what I want to say to this is if you're having to ask that question, you probably need to pause your business. Um, one of the reasons that we simplified, and, and this, it, this really comes to how I make decisions. One of the reasons I simplified my decision on this to legal, civic, and personal is because this is such a complex situation that has so many other things. I was getting bogged down with, okay, well, if I do this, I have to think about this, 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 and this. And what about this? And what about this? And what about this? As soon as I simplified it, it just became clear to me. Um, actually, I had people in my life who were immunocompromised, right? My grandfather is in stage four cancer right now. And I know that I want to be able to take care of him. And so it actually didn't matter what anything else was. I just needed to stay home for my family. That simplified it for me. So if, and I, I'm curious, Luke, how you and George would answer this, but you know, yeah. you, you carry general liability insurance for this reason. I wouldn't, um, I would not operate in a way that I felt like I needed liability that I could purchase, insurance I couldn't purchase. That would just, if I woke up in your shoes, that's what I yeah, mean. it's a good question. Um, um, I mean, I'm, I, I'm a, a software developer, but I am a small business owner. And um, so I think I would say, you know, we're, we're not, we're not legal experts here. So I don't know what the, what the legal ramifications would be. Um, but, um, you know, you need to do what, what you're comfortable with, honestly. Um, I, and I, I think Tim, Tim made a good point. If this is something that makes you uncomfortable, maybe that is the time to, to think about pausing your business. And the only thing I would add, Luke, is that um, we started by saying, remember that this isn't about you. It's about how your clients feel. And yeah. I know, how would your clients feel if you walked in and said, hi, I know we're in the middle of this. Can you sign a liability waiver for me? <laughs> so ask yourself that question. Is how is the client actually going to see that moment? Um, and I, I know that's a hard decision to look at. But, uh, you know, and if you really feel like you need to move forward with that, I would also, again, we're not legal experts. I would say find a lawyer you can talk to. Yeah, you know, George, that's a really good. It's a great way to just put yourself in your client's shoes. Um, I, the only other thing I would add to this topic here is this is not something that you want to DIY. There is a reason that lawyers get paid for these kinds of discussions. So uh, if you are going to continue operating and if you are feeling that need to do that or somebody is telling you that you need to do that, you need legal counsel. So if you have a lawyer on, on call or you have a lawyer friend or somebody, you know, call and ask them and say, hey, this is what I'm considering. Um, so beyond that, I'm not really sure. How, how, I'm not even going to wade into the legal side of it. Okay, thanks. That was really great. Uh, so our next question is, uh, is this. I don't have many appointments pre-scheduled. How should I go about contacting my clients? And should I contact all of them? Well, I think one of the things we, we did talk about is this idea that um, you don't necessarily need to be sending out an email to all of your clients, especially because we, we do think that you should be talking to the ones who have appointments coming up, those pre-scheduled ones. If you don't have many appointments pre-scheduled, then at this time, uh, you may not need to send an email. Uh, you might decide to send that celebration email in hopefully six weeks or so, that, or two weeks, who knows how long, to be able to say, hey, just a reminder, I am doing business and, and, and excited to get back to work. Yeah, I think I would add to that. Um, this, um, one, the, one of the frameworks we added was you need to communicate to the right people, the right message at the right time. Mm -hmm. And if, if you don't have any appointments pre-scheduled and you don't want to fill up your calendar for the next couple of weeks, you actually don't need to do anything. Um, but yeah, like George said, at, at the end of this, that's actually a great opportunity to, to fill up your calendar quickly. And you know, I'd like to stress, you know, I believe that people, when we come out of this, there's going to be a big camaraderie of people wanting to help small businesses. And so I think it's a great opportunity to, to put yourself out there. Yeah, I, I actually think that you're absolutely right on that last point, Luke. I mean, it, 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 it's so hard to read the tea leaves and predict the future. And, you know, you should take any prediction from anybody, including me, with just a grain of salt. But, you know, when I was, when I'm watching the news and I, there is such an uproar 
over the small businesses that are closing right now in the community, people are almost as upset about that as they are having to stay home. Like it's one of the top trending things in the news. And so I really think that there's going to be this huge surge of supporting small businesses uh, on the other side of this. But to specifically speak to the question, um, you know, yeah, send the right email to the right person at the right time. You have one email to send, two emails to send because you have two pre-scheduled appointments in the next few weeks. But also think about any piano service reminders. Um, a lot of folks that are using automation these days already, like I'm not thinking about the fact that tomorrow I might have, you know, 15, 20 clients that are going to get a reminder that their piano's due for service. Right, so I'm actually communicating with them by changing the templates to say, hey guys, you know, we are being affected by this crisis. Uh, we are accepting future appointments. So if you want to get on our future calendar, that's great. And we're making rescheduling really easy. And we are personally calling all of our customers um, because I, we actually have technicians in multiple areas and some are more affected than others right now. But the trend seems to be that everything is coming to a grinding halt. Um, here in the, I would say probably within the next week if the trends continue. Um, so you, you don't have that much work to do. That's really good. I have a full-time office staffer. Do you know what she's done for the last week? She has spent 24 seven on the phone just getting people rescheduled, right? There was no time to do anything else. So count your blessings, uh, send two emails, you know, send a few other emails to people who need to know in the next few weeks and then get on with the checklist and go through it and focus your time elsewhere because you have a great opportunity to turn that corner really fast. Okay, so the next one, um, is there anything I can say or do as I enter the customer's home to put them more at ease during this crisis? I'll jump in on this one. Yes, but you need to ask the question 20, 30, 45 minutes sooner. Right. You want to ask the moment that you book that appointment uh, are and actually we put a good blog post on this called communicating with clients during a crisis. And we link to it in the downloaded document that you have. So go go read that blog post. But the moment you book an appointment, it sounds like you're in an area that's not affected as much. You're still going out. Uh, you know, I'm you know, we're just saying, hey, call email people and say, listen, um, we want you to be safe. And so here's what I am doing to be proactive. And then when you walk in the door, you told them a story about what you're doing to be proactive. Make sure you fulfill on that promise, right? And so this is about a promise and fulfillment, a promise and fulfillment, a promise and fulfillment. And if you're promising only things that you can deliver today, the, the fulfillment of those promises are really easy. Um, George, it looked like you had something you wanted to jump in on. You did, uh, you said exactly what I was going to say, Tim. I have nothing else to add to that. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. So uh, the next one, um, I've closed my business um, to in-home appointments and have disabled the online scheduling. Um, I'm uneasy about promising future dates when I honestly don't know myself. I don't want 200 clients to schedule in April if I'll have to cancel them all again. I think, uh, and so that's the end of the question. I, I think the okay. question here is, uh, when should I start scheduling appointments again or how, how should I go about that process, right? Maybe you could speak to that. I, I love, I think, I think one thing I just want to point out here is, is by saying I'm uneasy about promising future dates. Great. Remember, don't make promises that you feel uncomfortable about. Yes. So, and again, one of the things we talked about was this idea of what you're going to promise is when you're going to reassess. Yes. Right. So we're going to say, I'm pausing my business. I'm going to reassess by X date. I'll be taking future bookings. And that's where, that's where the question I think is, is at hand here, right? I don't feel comfortable taking bookings in April. Then don't, don't do it. If you only feel comfortable taking bookings in June, do that. And then let's say the stars align in mid April, things lighten up and you're able to open back up and send that celebration email. Well, the great news is you have from mid April all the way through the month of May to start getting new bookings in. So, yeah. Only promise what you feel comfortable with. Tim, I'll have it has to you. Yeah. Um, the, I, I, I'm going to take a slight cautionary uh, approach to the, question, the person who asked the question. Uh, George took the positive side of it. Um, by just doing this hard stop without actually thinking through all these ramifications, 
I would just want you to know you are creating an additional crisis on the other side of your business by having this uncertainty just hanging out in the air. And this is a problem for you and this is a problem for your clients, right? And so I wouldn't want, it, it, you know, no, I'm, I've, I'm in your shoes too. I don't want to wake up every day without uncertainty. So what George was trying to do was to give you certainty and to help your clients and give them certainty. And so that's really what you need to, you know, uh, it, it's it, in his scenario, like let's say the stars align in mid April, this thing got blown up, uh, way out of proportion. This is a huge celebration. It's like, hey guys, I thought I was gonna be shut down till June, it's mid April, I am ready to rock and roll. Who, you know, you're lighting up the phones, you're doing the automated emails, that's a fun story to tell. So it's not like the end, it's the end of the world for you. Um, but what you do want to really sit down today and think about is put yourself in their shoes. They are dealing with a ton of life being uncertain right now. And what you did in your response is you just delivered them another thing to be uncertain about. Because now every time they look at the piano, they're like, ah, oh, that's another thing that I got to get scheduled when this whole uncertain thing suddenly is over. And I don't want that for you. So um, there's probably even room to say, you know, send another email to folks in a couple of weeks. I wouldn't do it like back to back. But, you know, just as you're reading the situation, say, hey, guys, I, I wanted to let you know. I realized I, I left a lot of uncertainty in that last email. You say it better than this, but this is what you're saying. I left a lot of uncertainty in that email I sent you last week. I'm sorry about that. Uh, we're, we're all in uncertain times. But here's what I do know. I've decided that on April 20th, I am reevaluating whether or not I'm going to take bookings. And so I hope you've stayed safe and healthy during this thing. I, I'll be back in touch on April 20th. I would like to add one thing here real quick too. Um, I mean, you need to do what, what you're comfortable with, but yeah. in, in, in my mind, um, I, I, don't, I believe that most people are going to be understanding about rescheduling during this crisis. And so, so it may be okay to put, thing, put things on your calendar. If you, have, if you have customers that are really eager to get your services, you could tell them, I'll get you on my calendar. You know, and again, don't promise things that you can't deliver. So just say, um, if, if for whatever reason, you know, I'm, we're still all sequestered, um, I'll make it really easy to schedule. I'll give you priority o over rescheduling, you know, something like that. Um, so I, I think people will understand if you talk to them about rescheduling during this time. I'm seeing so many people being understanding during this, this time of crisis. Yeah. But again, do, do, do what you're comfortable with. Yeah. The, the, and I, I'm going to add one more thing here because uh, I see this in your question because I do this all the time. Uh, the, the technical term is catastrophizing, right? I get scared about something and I just tend to blow the fear of it up just too much. So you said, I don't want to reschedule 200 appointments. Do you realize that if in the month of May you have 200 appointments, you're going to have 10 appointments a day? Or if that was spread out over April and May, that would be five appointments a day, right? If your schedule is that booked during this time, it means you're operating at near full capacity. That's just not going to happen. There's too much uncertainty in the marketplace. So I think your fear that you're going to have to do all this work to reschedule all these people and so you're leaving them with uncertainty is a little bit out of proportion here. So I just want to dial that back a little bit and say, listen, we're going to be fine. Um, I believe we're going to be fine. Uh, so don't, uh, don't feel the need to just justify the uncertainty with this event that's never going to happen of you having 10 appointments a day to reschedule in April. Uh, it might be four, it might be three, right? It's going to be a little bit of work, but it's not going to be as much as you gave in that example. So I think you might just be a little bit scared there is what I heard. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, the next question is, um, is this, what do you do with the appointments that are scheduled in Gazelle? We can't postpone since we don't have a future date, but if we cancel, we lose the notes that are in the appointment. Um, how do we handle this? Ah, uh, thank you for the question. Um, we're trying to not make this um, uh, webinar about Gazelle. So um, if you could just email us that question to support at gazelleapp.io and we'll answer that question personally. Yeah, uh, I, I'll actually jump in on this real quick. Um, the, the technicalities of how to do that in Gazelle, yes, email into support. Uh, but I'm gonna tell you what I told my office staff. 
I told them, grab a sheet of legal paper and take names, right? Every event you cancel, put the name in order that you canceled it. Because when this is over, we are lighting up the phones and we are going through that list in order of everything. Now, that is a real archaic way of handling this. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say this because technically, you know, I'm, cause I'm automation, like aut automate, automate, I'll do all these things. Now, automation is great. It's great. It's a great place for it. Actually, in the middle of a crisis, there are times when just grabbing that piece of paper and a pen is the fastest way to do this because it's not a system I'm gonna have to do later this year. I'm not asking her to always write everything on paper. I'm just saying for the next week, every time you reschedule an appointment or cancel an appointment, take the name down and don't lose that piece of paper. <laughs> so I think there's a simpler way of handling that scenario. So I would, I would just wanna free you from feeling like you need to build this complex automated way of doing something when there's actually a really simple way to do it right in front of you. Okay, so we have a couple other gazelle related questions too. And um, okay. I guess I would just recommend um, everyone, we are well, trying to keep this focused. Yeah, Nathan, can you extract the, um, the overarching theme yeah. out of some of them? And then if there are technicalities of how to do this specifically in the software, write into support and we'll give you the technical step-by-step -step guide. Yep, yep, sure will. All right, so this, this particular question is about contacting clients. Um, mm -hmm. essentially doing uh, bulk mailings. Um, so um, yeah, how, how would you guys recommend doing that? Well, uh, in the, according to what we're putting in this webinar, we actually, if we woke up in your shoes, we wouldn't be doing bulk mailings. We would be targeting the emails to the right person, the right email, the right time. Uh, because again, you don't want to be part of the problem. And so I would actually, no matter who you are, if you have an automated system uh, and you are thinking of blasting this whole bulk thing out there, um, that is way too complex of a solution for something that needs to be more simple. Uh, George, I don't know if you want to jump in there on anything, but. No, I, I think um, one of the things we talk about a lot is uh, being personal. And, and really your business has many times been in that personal relationship. And now is not the time to forget that piece. Stay personal yeah. um, and keep it about that relationship. Yeah. One of the, one of the fun things, it, it's so hard to be, uh, because I, I've been with you in this whole thing. I'm, I've been scared. <laughs> I've looked at this, I've gone, oh my God, this is unprecedented. Absolutely unprecedented. And at the same time, like I take my personal hat off and I put my business hat on as, okay, how do I need to respond? And where is the opportunity that I need to see that I'm not gonna see if I allow myself to be scared? And I think this is such an opportunity to just strip automation away and be personal with people. This is such an opportunity to build that personal trust, to build that personal relationship with people because it is so easy, no matter who you are, to pick up the phone and say to somebody, wow, this is absolutely crazy. How are you doing? How is this affecting your family? And so it, there's such an opportunity there for you to go personal. I, and so I would definitely agree with that. All right, so the next question has nothing at all to do with Gazelle. Um, if we decide to pause our business and we've been paying into unemployment, should we file a claim? And Ooh, so, that is it. Yeah. yeah, and if so, is this going to hurt our business in the future? Yeah, well, um, you need to pay attention. To, okay, unemployment in the United States is a state-by-state state thing. So you need to pay attention. And if, I believe even Canada and uh, UK and these other countries have some form of unemployment insurance. It's like social unemployment insurance, and your businesses pay into it, even if it's a pay-as-you-go pay system like uh, Europe has. So um, in the United States, there are articles surfacing in the last few days that Congress is currently considering waiving the fees. And they did this in 2008. They said, listen, if you lay people off, there's no longer a penalty. You're not gonna pay higher premiums over time. Uh, and they can get, usually there's a waiting period your employee has to wait for, uh, or you have to wait for before you start getting it. And they're saying, no, we'll mail you a check today. So those are good things so long as your state has enacted those changes, not every state has. So check one, check your state. 
Number two, in North Carolina, it's $350 a week. What, and I'm, I'm grateful for that, right? And so it's like, I almost think I could generate $350 a week doing some of the things that we talked about. Uh, and so, and then the other thing that's unclear that you need to ask your state unemployment agency about is in order to qualify for unemployment, you have to be laid off or have your hours reduced. And there's different rules that govern both. But if you're the sole business owner and you're laying yourself off, who's running your business while you're laid off? Are you actually laid off? Or did you close your business? Are you actually required to close your business to tap unemployment? Those are questions that you need to be asking your, your regional unemployment office because they're going to have different rules for these different kinds of situations. So you just need to be really clear. Don't jump into that. But it might actually be a really good, especially if they start like upping the benefits because that's also on the table in some states. Uh, they're going to drop the waiting period, up the benefits, and not penalize you uh, for laying people off, which is typically how it works. This is also a good time as a small business owner to be taking some of these questions to your local chamber of commerce. Yes. Uh, it's a great time to be having that conversation and build a relationship there as well. Um, and that, some of these things, there's a lot of stuff moving right now uh, of ways to help small business owners. Uh, so keep your eyes to the, you know, to the news, specifically not to learn more about what's happening with COVID, but to learn what's happening for small business owners. Um, and, and your Chamber of Commerce will help guide you towards that. And this is where I am personally so thankful I have an accountant right now. And that's not to say if you don't have an accountant, you're up a creek, right? But if you have an accountant, call them and just say, how is this going to affect me? Because, you know, I had my meeting with my accountant. It was 35 minutes. And I just said, okay, here's what I need to know. I need to know how much cash do I have in the bank? Where's my revenue? What, what collections and receivables do I have? And what happens if my revenue goes to zero for three weeks? Now, walk me through those situations. And, and she did. And I asked her about all these other things. And she was like, well, you, you know, she told me things I didn't know. So if you have an accountant, lean on them. If you have an accountant friend right now, pick up the phone and call them and say, I, I haven't had an accountant. I'm a small business owner. I get it. I just got questions. Can you answer these? They're going to answer them for you because people are being human right now and they want to help you. All right, great. Um, so the next question, um, how do you recommend contacting clients that are currently on my schedule during, during my pause? Should I send them a message through an automated system like Gazelle um, with a rescheduling link or should I do personal phone calls to them? Yeah, I would uh, send them a, well, I would, I would go in this order. Phone call beats text beats email. I would just use that framework. Pick up the phone and call them. If you don't get them, text them. And if they, if they don't respond, email them, right? I would go in that order. And I would always provide the clarity that we talked about earlier, right? You want to say, listen, we need to cancel this. We need to reschedule this appointment. I'm accepting future appointments. I will reevaluate on this date. So make sure it's after that date. And I'm going to make it really easy to reschedule if after I reevaluate, we need to do this again. But here's the deal. I know that on the other side of this, my schedule is just going to be absolutely bonkers. And I want you to be on that schedule because I care about you and your piano. I don't want you to get caught up in uh, not being on there. So go ahead and get on there now and I'll take care of you. I would uh, underscore that, that um, I think this is a time to be personal. Um, yes. people, people are looking for personal connections. And one of the points we made in the presentation was this is a great time to strengthen relationships with your clients. So if you have time and if it's not a lot of customers, um, just make the personal call, chat with them for a few minutes and just, just be human, be human with them. Use it as an opportunity to, um, to grow that relationship with them. Yep. Ask them how they're doing, how their family's doing, if they're staying healthy. Um, it's an easy conversation to have, but it lets them know you care for them. Okay, so the next um, next question actually was about Gazelle. I'm going to skip that one. Um, so the, the next one, sorry, we've had a lot of questions. 
Is any thoughts on how to work with employees or business partners or office assistants during a business pause? Yeah, um, I'm going to jump in here because I am dealing with all three. Um, this is probably one of the hardest things about being a business owner that nobody ever talks about. Um, because for the last six years, I have gone to bed every single night aware that my decisions are, are literally putting food on the table for families and kids. Um, I've had office staff, I have technicians, and um, nobody ever talks about the weight that you carry there. And if you have employees and office staff, you know exactly what I'm talking about because you have probably been feeling that weight. And when a crisis hits like this, I, I tell you what, it was a nanosecond. When these things started rolling in and I started realizing this is big, I need to pay attention to this. My second thought was, oh my goodness, what is this going to mean for my tribe, my people, right? And I, I'm going to be honest, I had to go to my team and apologize for an initial response that I had early in the process because I missed the gravity of the situation, right? So as I'm trying to respond, I'm actually making the problem worse. And one of my employees called me and said, hey, I think you meant to say this, but this is your response made me feel this way. So last week, this whole last week, I've actually been talking to people. And so I had to go back and say, guys, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you feel that way, but here's what I'm thinking right? Here's my adjusted thought. And uh, I've been trying to circle up and call everybody. I've been trying to text everybody. Uh, my office staff called me today and said that they went to the ER with 103 degree fever and didn't get diagnosed with the flu or anything else. And I'm carrying that now. It's like, hey, we're all working remotely. I'm not worried that I was exposed, but oh my goodness, like I'm carrying that weight. And this is where it goes back to what we've been saying, like be human. Be human. This is such an unprecedented thing that nobody was prepared for. Nobody. And you might need to lay people off. You cannot guarantee that. So as a business owner, you need to be preparing yourself for emotionally for how you handle this. Because, uh, you know, it's like, hopefully there's some helps there, right? You're having to ask questions like, how much cash do I have in the bank? And do I float, you know, cause I've talked to some business owners where they're literally in between the decision of if I float this person's salary for a month to help them get through this crisis, I'm out of cash when this thing turns around, which means I have to go into the surge of need without staff. What do I do? Right? Those are the kinds of questions you're having to address as a business owner. And it's not that those are bad. It's just that this is your job as a business owner. And so the first thing I would do, you need to be human. You need to be honest with them. You need to be, you know, talking about, hey, guys, I care about you. And this is big. And you don't you go back to what can you promise? You can only promise what you can deliver today right now and so think through all your responses and what can you promise well you can promise if you have to lay somebody off to help them file the unemployment paperwork you can promise to give them all their w-2 information that they're going to need you can promise to help them find another job if that's the decision that they need to make you can help give them a good reference these are all things that you can promise and deliver like that as an employer you can't promise that they're going to be okay you can't promise that their finances can sustain this, right? So be very aware of what you can and cannot promise. That's probably the biggest thing. Um, I, I know I went on for a while there. I'm just trying to think like it's, you, you take a freelancer trying to deal with this crisis and you put in on the hat of a business owner and just multiply times 10 the number of decisions that are getting thrown at you you really need some good solid frameworks to go, yes, yes, no. Yes, yes, no. And be a human. Uh, George, I, I know you're dealing yeah. with a lot of this. Yeah, so. I am actually. And, um, and actually, Tim, I think 
two things you said there, I want to bring out and, and add something to it. Just one, remember that we've said this over and over again is but being human and having relationships now's a great time to just be a good human um, yeah and i think being transparent is excellent and giving people as much certainty as you can give them so if you can say to your staff here's the deal i will not be laying you off without two weeks notice are you comfortable with that if not then don't make that statement um, I know that we're going to, we're, we're, cl- we're not taking clients right now, scheduled wise, we're, we're pausing the business, but I'm going to keep you on for the next four weeks. Cause I've, I've talked to my accountant and I know I can do that. I'm certain that I can do that. And I'm going to review that decision in two weeks and I'll always, I, and then I'm going to make that decision and I'm going to give that certainty that I'm going to look at that again in two weeks. So again, giving yourself the certainty that so that you can make a decision, set a timeline for when you'll go back to it. Um, and that's really where we are is, is I, I just continually ask myself where, <laughs> what can I say with transparent honesty and mm-hmm. to, to give that kind of certainty, knowing that, and at the other side of that is when on the next decision will be made. Um, yeah. Yeah. In a lot of ways, when you are a business owner, you have clients and you have employees and you need to treat both of them the same way as a human, right? So the same way that you don't want to give a client, you don't just want to land the client with a ton of open-ended uncertainty. You definitely don't want to do that for your employees. Mm-hmm. So, you know, use that same idea, but just put the employee there uh, and put yourself in their shoes and just say, what can I possibly do to make this situation more certain? You can't get rid of all the uncertainty there's too much going on out there. There's too much uncertainty, but you can improve some things. You can say some things that are true, that you can deliver on, and that are certain. And you want to be real comfortable with what those things are. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so um, we still have questions rolling in here. Yeah, let's um, just, we're just gonna keep the, the questions coming until there's no more. So all right, this is about you guys. So yeah, tell us what's on your plate. All right. So the next one is kind of lighthearted, I guess, but uh, it's uh, just a question. What kind of stuff are you guys doing to get exercise? <laughs> okay. So, um, we all have kids. Uh, so let's start with that. Um, but, but actually I've been reading up on this. My wife and I were just talking about this and I will say that being outside and getting some fresh air and sun is Right now, we're not being, most of the U.S. is not being told to shelter in in place. For our international friends, you might be at this point. Um, But honestly, there are lots of things you can be doing. If you can go for a walk, do it. Um, And inside, there are lots of in-place activities that you can do. Um, Yeah, I actually, um, so I I love to go running. Running is is one of my hobbies. Um, I had a, a half marathon scheduled for this past Sunday, and it got canceled. And um, I've been training for it for six months. So I was really disappointed. Um, But I ended up, I just went to the trail that it was going to be at anyway. And I ran a half marathon on on Sunday uh, by myself. So I I really enjoyed that. Um, The kids have been cooped up inside for a long time. So we took them for a long, long walk last night. Um, It was really funny. Um, They, usually we get to the back of our neighborhood and our youngest um, just starts to drag her feet and she's like complaining and all this stuff. She was the whole way back and the whole way up, she was running ahead of us. Like we had to keep pulling her back. So they were, they were eager for the, for the walk. So we just did a neighborhood walk. And actually we met a lot of, a lot of neighbors that were out doing walk. We, we stayed on separate sides of the road, but, <laughs> but we got to meet a lot of our neighbors. Yeah. Um, yeah I just want to say to all of our friends in, in San Francisco, Italy, overseas, uh, who are being told, even I just got word Colorado, uh, a county, I think in Denver is told to shelter in place. Uh, New York City, right? You're being told to shelter in place. Boston, I, I don't know when that order's coming, but you're right. All these orders are coming and I know people in all of these places that are sheltering in place. Like our hearts go out to you. Um, it's not the end of the world, right? We're gonna, I have, a, I, my sister lives in Seattle. She has been sheltering in place for 18 days voluntarily right they just but she's got young kids and they were not about to risk it 18 so she told us like listen after two weeks 
your brain kind of resets and this is a new normal and you find ways to do things. Uh, but, you know, so to the question about exercise for us, um, we live in the suburbs. We are not required to shelter in place. So we're allowed to do walks. We're allowed to walk the kids. Um, every day I get off work and I am trying to go outside with the kids in the backyard. Uh, this afternoon, I had a three-year-old in my arms jumping on the trampoline with two four-year-old twins and a nine-year-old throwing a Frisbee and a ball into the trampoline, right? And so, you know, I'm sitting there jumping and playing with them. And, you know, that's basically their entertainment is our exercise. And uh, <laughs> that's, you know, but a lot of people that don't have kids, it just takes intentionality. Um, that's really what it is. And I, we didn't talk about this, George, in the, um, in the section on like what to do with your time. That's a really good point that we didn't think yes. to include. Yeah. Um, the, the mental health of exercising is so important. Yeah. So if you have an exercise routine and you're sheltering in place and you need to bring that routine indoors, well, there's exercises you can do. Throw a yoga mat out and there you go. Um, you know, but keep it. Do it daily. That will help establish that rhythm and be really good for you. Yep. And for my family, uh, so we live on top of a mountain in Virginia. Our driveway is about um, just about a kilometer long. And um, so we've been walking together as a family down to the end of the driveway to get the mail every day. <laughs> Usually, you know, we're out and about and we'll just pick up the mail at the mailbox on the way back back home. But since we're staying home so much, um, we've just been doing family walks down. And it's not that you know, down and back is not that far, but um, it's been a good time for conversation with the kids and it, it's a little bit of exercise. All right, yeah. so the next question, um, up until two weeks ago, I was getting ready to hire a second technician for 20 plus hours a week and an office assistant for five to 10 hours a week. Is it fiscally prudent to get them on board right now with the necessary training and hit the ground running when this crisis is over? Or do I risk expending all my cash reserves if this pandemic lasts until July or even later? Yeah, that is a, wow. um, <laughs> well, I mean, a couple of things here. Um, man, I'm glad that you didn't hire them. Yes, you know, two weeks ago, right? In, in hiring the office assistant a webinar that we did, we said, you know, the worst possible thing is that you have to hire somebody and immediately lay them off because you didn't plan well. Well, the second worst thing is you hire somebody and then immediately lay them off because a crisis hit that was out of your control, right? So in a way, you could just kind of step back and be like, wow, that was really good timing. And I think you, a lot of people need to hear that, right? Because a lot of people, it's not just you. A lot of people are saying, oh man, I had, business was booming. I was making all these plans and everything just came to a stop. And you just need to hear like, it's okay. That's actually a good thing that you did not actually make some of those decisions and you now have cash. You mentioned you have cash reserves. And so whether or not you hire them and you burn cash reserves, the question, if I woke up in your shoes that I would be asking is this, is that fair to both of you? Is that fair to the person you're thinking of hiring? And is that fair to you? Because it is a risk, right? If you don't pull the trigger, this opportunity might not be there on the other side. But then again, if you don't pull the trigger, it might be there on the other side. Uh, but the reality is you're spinning your business back up. It might take a couple of months. So this might be an opportunity for four months from now or five months from now. And so if I woke up in your shoes, I wouldn't be looking at my cash reserves from a two week, three week, four week standpoint, I would be looking at my cash reserves from a six month standpoint. So if you told me you had nine to 12 months of cash reserve and this person was such a rock star that you absolutely could not build your business without them, great, fund their salary for possibly four months until they're full. But I doubt that's true. What's probably true is, um, you know, it, either the cash runs out or you just need to sit and just hit pause um, and just ride this thing out and just pr promise them what you can promise today. I want to hire you. I was about to hire you. I just need to wait because I'm putting everything on pause. I would add something here too. Um, 
uh, de depending on, on that employee's or that potential employee's current situation, I don't know if they, if they were employed already, if, if they weren't and they're, and they're out of work um, and you have some cash reserves, maybe you could do something like um, offer to, to pay them to do some training or something like that. So you can, you can bring them on, do some of the onboarding that you would have had to do anyway, start doing yeah. some training into your processes and pay them a little bit to, to, um, to help them along. And then it would speed up the process so that they would be already trained when this is over and then bring them on full time when this is over. Um, but again, that, that, you know, it, it depends on what their situation is and what, uh, what, what your cash reserves are. Um, that was just an idea I had while Tim was talking. And the flip side, I'll just toss another idea out is what I also heard is that you were getting ready to hire both a tech and an office assistant at the same time. Yeah. Um, and so I would just say, this is a great time to take that step back and look at that business plan you've got going. Um, we've got a, a webinar that we've done on hiring your first office assistant. If you didn't watch that already, you know, watch that through. And, and we've got a lot of frameworks that we've put out there to think about um, when you're making that kind of decision. We were going to do hiring your first tech uh, even tonight, uh, but we ourselves had to ch make changes similar to what you're thinking about doing um, because it's changing everything right now. So. Now's a great time, like, like Tim said, this might be uh, providential in, the, in that you can take a step back and say, okay, is this the way I want to roll it out? Because in two, three, four months, you may roll it out differently based on what you learn between now and then. Yeah. And one of the things, too, that I've been looking at, um, Luke, what you, what you just did is something I do all the time. If you give me one, two, or three options – and all three are some level of bad options. I just say, no thanks, all of those don't work for me. I'm looking for option D. And as soon as you say that that doesn't work for me, as soon as you say out loud to yourself, man, this is sad, but I can't hire the tech and I can't hire the office assistant today, what can I do to improve my business? You're gonna start seeing different opportunities. But if you get hung up on, you know, really investing a lot of energy into something that's a bad idea, you're just going to waste time. Um, but man, on the other side of this, like you talk about every business in America getting a clean slate to start doing things differently. This is going to be huge because I can tell you I'm doing one thing differently. Well, not different. I've already been working with my accountant on this. I told my accountant at you know, last December that I wanted to 10X the amount of cash I had in the bank because if anything ever happened, I wanted to be able to ride through it. And I can tell you, I was actually going into this crisis in my, in well up piano with less cash than I wanted. And so I don't ever wanna be in this situation again. So you better believe I am prioritizing profit and I'm prioritizing putting cash in the bank on the other side of this. Uh, and so there's gonna be a clean slate you're gonna to get to do things so much better than you were already thinking of doing them. And you're gonna be wiser because in the back of your head, you're gonna be going, man, I need to hire somebody, but I need to make sure that I can make it through another unexpected thing like this crisis. All right, so we've got two questions remaining. Um, so this, this first one is, would you consider it insensitive to send a regular reminder email to clients that doesn't that to send a regular reminder email to clients that doesn't say anything about COVID-19 during this time whose pianos are not due for service in a month or so or should it still maintain a COVID-19 statement so I would I'll, I'll grab this one um, I would say a, a couple of things here um, if you're talking about the regular reminders that you would have sent out, but they're not due for a couple of months. Um, so you would have sent the email today, but their piano isn't actually due for service for a couple of months. Um, you should probably still include something in there because it's what's on everybody's mind. Um, and, and nobody knows what's, how long this is going to extend. So this harkens back to the, the certainty thing. Give them the certainty that you know, but don't, don't promise things you can't deliver. So, um, put, put in there something like, uh, I, I forget the exact wording that we had mentioned, but, um, uh, you know, you can get on my schedule, you know, my schedule is going to be packed in a couple of, couple of months, but, um, go ahead and schedule now, get on my calendar. Um, I'm planning on resuming business on X date. Um, if that needs to change, I'll, 
contact you. You know, give them give them certainty, but also let acknowledge the uncertainty. But I do think that it probably is important to actually put something on there for any of the emails that you're going out are going out now, um, just because it's what's on everybody's mind and they're going to wonder, you know, what what you're thinking about. I just tackled this uh, for another thing I work with, where I had to send out an email that had nothing to do at all with what people are dealing with in the world. But because I was sending it to people, I had to acknowledge where they were in themselves mentally. And so it wasn't the thing I led with, but at the very end, I did end with, you know, I, it's impossible for me to send this email without talking about current events um, and tied back a little bit of what we were doing and how it tied to the current events. Um, so I, I agree with Luke on that. It's, you really need to acknowledge who you're writing to and put yourself in their shoes. Again, looking at it from the perspective of how is the client feeling when they get this message? You know, one of the things that I've been doing uh, is watching my inbox. I'm actually the guy reading every email from every business that I get. Why? Well, because I want to know two things. What are they doing that I need to be doing? And I'm reading a lot of emails. I'm going, I ain't touching that. <laughs> that was a bad email, that Delta email I got. It's like, ah, jeepers, like, come on. Uh, but there's so <laughs> many emails. Um, I got an email from a local coffee shop, right? And, and so I'm seeing emails from businesses and I, I, I'm going, I, I'm paying attention. To, I'm just putting my consumer hat on, uh, my customer hat on. How do I feel after getting that email from them? What problem do I think they were trying to solve? Did they solve that problem? Did they actually achieve it? And so I've, you know, I've gotten emails from businesses unrelated to COVID that didn't mention it. Go through your inbox and the next time you see those emails, just read them and just ask yourself, did I want them to mention it? And I think you'll come to that answer on your own as to what's right for you. And this may be different too, as time goes on. Um, if this does stretch out longer uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> and you, you have to send out an email that doesn't have anything to do with COVID, people might appreciate the normalcy of not mentioning it. <laughs> so yes. right, yeah. right now, I'm in, I, I say it, it's on everybody's mind, so you probably should. But um, as this drags out, they might not want to hear about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was listening to somebody else today and they were reading a book about Winston Churchill during World War II. And anyway, Nazis dropped tons of bombs on the UK. And anyway, they were just talking about how people became insensitive to the danger. And they were actually just moving on with normal life. So we would look at it from the outside, like how in the world can you move on with normal life? And if this thing drags on too long, I think people are just gonna get tired of the word COVID. They're just gonna, listen, we're sheltering in place, we're fine, we don't want everybody to freak out. But that day, in my estimation, isn't today. I can't say it won't be next week or the week after, but you're gonna kind of feel this in your relationships. You're gonna feel this in the emails you're reading and you're gonna feel this in your community. So just keep your pulse on it and always put on the hat. If I was the consumer, what would I want to hear? How does that make me feel? How do I think they're gonna feel if I send this message and you wanna send the right message to the right person at the right time? which includes whether or not you decide to structure in the word COVID into um, anything about the email. All right, so the final question, and um, if anyone has any remaining questions here um, in the next minute or two, uh, go ahead and type them in uh, real quick. Um, otherwise, you can send us uh, questions at support at gazellelab.io. Um, final question uh, was, I've already used the terminology of shutting down my business in an email to my clients. What should I do now? Yeah. Um, it's not the end of the world. Um, and I think you have an opportunity to just stop and evaluate how do I want to communicate with people going forward? Just start there. Uh, it doesn't need to be complicated. Uh, it's not going to do anybody any good for you to email everybody and try to backtrack like that's water under the bridge. Uh, so just decide that you're going to handle things differently. Um, if I think back to the, the question earlier about all that uncertainty that was in the air, 
right? If you read that email and, and you did leave a lot of uncertainty, then um, consider, not today, I mean, if you just sent the email yesterday, not today, not tomorrow, not, I don't know when the right time is, but at the right time, let's close that uncertainty gap. Let's send another message and the whole problem you're trying to solve is I sent an email that had a ton of uncertainty. So now I'm going to try to close that uncertainty gap with this message and just say something like, hey guys, just wanted to give you a brief update. I'm weathering the storm well and I've decided on this day I'm gonna reevaluate the decision to pause my business and just go ahead and shift the terminology without saying anything. That's what I would do if I woke up in your shoes. Awesome. Okay. Hey, uh, hey, sorry, George, did you have something to add yet? I, I'm not going to add to that. There was just something that came through the Q&A that isn't a question, but it's a, a statement. I just want to um, highlight it because I think it's great to, to highlight. And the statement was to be attentive to taking in uh, too much of a bad thing or too many chemicals or things like that. And I just think it's worth saying that you know, too much digital, too much caffeine, too much alcohol. I myself just had to cut down on my caffeine intake because it was making me a little bit uh, anxious. So if there's things that you know in your life that during this time period, getting exercise is one thing, but cutting things like digital caffeine and alcohol uh, might be a, a great time to, to spend some time cutting that in your life if you're finding that it makes you worry or anxious or that kind of thing. It was just a great statement that came in through Q&A and I just felt it was worth highlighting. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, George. All right. Thank you everyone for joining yeah. us tonight. Uh, we hope that you stay safe and stay healthy. Oh. Tim, did you have something to add yet? Oh, no, no, no. Finish what you're saying. And I'll, I was going to say something. Go ahead. I was just going to close it out. So. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, everybody, we just wanted to let you know, like, we are writing this through together with you. Um, and our hope for you is that you are able to build a stronger business through this whole crisis. If there is anything that we can do for you, we can promise you one thing. We'll only promise you what we can deliver today, but we will answer your questions. We will hold your hands. We will walk with you because we are in this together. And so take advantage of all the people on our team. And we hope you stay safe. We hope you stay healthy. We hope that you grow closer to your families. You build better relationships in your communities uh, during this time. Uh, so thank you so much for taking time to be with us tonight. Thank you. Yep. Thank you all. Have a great night. Stay safe and stay healthy.